Make your calling and election sure. Okay, one, two, three. <laughs> Those who have faith in God and pray for their wives are the world's best husbands. Wow, they did a good job. Second, Ishmael's family and Isaac's family. Verses 12 through 18 is the record of the sons of Ishmael. Uh, Abraham's uh, concubine Hagar bore to him. Verses 13 through 15 reads, These are the names of the sons of Ishmael listed in the order of their births. Nebaios, the firstborn of Ishmael, Kedar, Abdil, Mipsam, Mish uh, Mishma, Duma, Masa, Hadad, Tema, Jeter, Nafish, and Kedema. These are the names of the 12 tribal rulers according to their settlements and camps. Later, these 12 rulers would have formed many nations and empires in the Middle East. Indeed, Abraham was the father of many nations. Among them, as we already saw, Tema appears in the Bible in relation with uh, Dodan. Also, two other sons, no, two other sons' names appear in the Bible several times, Nabaios and Kedar. The Nabataeans, descendants of Nabaios, spoke and wrote an early form of Arabic, and thus they were often referred as the Arabs uh, by Greek and Roman uh, historians. The Nabataeans and the Kedarites fought against the Assyrian Empire, so they appear in the Assyrian records as well. The Assyrian kingdom eventually broke into two as two brothers began to rule, one the king of Babylonia and the other the king of Assyria. In 652 BC, conflict broke out between these two brothers and the Kedarites supported the Babylonian kingdom. Soon the Kedarites faded from history and the Nabataeans came to the forefront. Later, Judah was destroyed by the Kedolaomer, uh, king of uh, the Babylonian Empire, in 586 BC, and the survivors were taken captives to Babylon. Then when Judah was uh, empty, uh, the Edomites moved into uh, 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 Judah. Those who settled in Judah later were called Edomians. Herod was an Edomian. Then when the land of Edom was empty, the Nabataeans in the Gulf of Aqaba moved into it, just about 80 miles from the Gulf of Aqaba, thus occupying the land of Esau. In time, the Nabataeans built an impressive civilization based on merchant trade. Their, their capital city was the, uh, the city of Petra. Later, the Nabataeans were in coalition with the Roman Empire, and under Pax Romana, they prospered, and then eventually absorbed into Rome, thus losing their identity and disappearing from the surface of human history. Indeed, as God promised, Ishmael's descendants were prosperous, forming many nations. In chapter 24, we saw God establishing Isaac and Rebekah's family. It was really amazing how all the people that were involved in it trusted in God and entrusted their life in God's hands. How they obeyed God's will and submitted themselves to it. It was really blessed marriage. Then, after that, how did it go? Usually we expect that everything went well with them due to God's blessing. And that they lived happily ever after. Just like the Disney uh, uh, cartoon. <laughs> but how was the reality? Things did not go that way. 
They remained childless because Rebecca was barren, even for 20 years. What an embarrassing moment for Isaac and Rebecca that they, God's covenant family, remained childless for 20 years. Maybe Isaac prayed, or Rebecca prayed, Lord, for your namesake, give me a child. 20 years they remained childless. Rebecca, when she was very young, saw God's guidance in her marriage matter. So with a confidence, she said, I will go. She expected that everything would go well with her family. But she remained childless. She was really confused. Maybe doubt about God's will, God's love for her, rose in her heart. Isaac's half-brother, Ishmael, was so fruitful. Twelve sons, then soon many grandchildren, maybe forming six soccer teams, <laughs> having Ishmael Cup uh, soccer league among themselves. <laughs> Whenever she saw how fruitful Ishmael's family was, Rebecca felt ashamed, thinking that something was wrong with her. She became very self-conscious. Whenever she saw some servants gathered together, talking and laughing, she felt condemned, thinking that they were talking about her. Her barrenness was indeed a very serious problem for her. In this very difficult situation, Isaac supported her fully, dedicating himself to her completely, praying for her even for 20 years. In that very challenging situation, how comforted Rebecca was when her husband showed such complete trust and support, praying for her all the time for even 20 years. Because of her husband's complete trust and support, she could deal with this very challenging situation in a proper way. Because of her husband's complete dedication to her, she was confident about herself as the mistress in the household. And thereby, she could tell her servants freely, do this, don't do that. What are you doing? <laughs> Isaac's love and prayer for her was the source of comfort and strength to her. Indeed, Isaac was the best husband in the world. <laughs> when husbands show this kind of complete support for their wives. Wives are very comforted and strengthened. With their husband's complete trust and support, these wives' self-esteem is boosted that they do not beg. Instead, they become confident about themselves. Then such confidence is revealed in their relationship with others, how they talk to them or how they behave. So such husbands are the world's best husbands. Don't you think so? <laughs> Who can be so great husbands like Isaac? Indeed, those who have faith in God and thereby those who pray for their wives. Let's say this together, all, uh, all the brothers. Those who have faith in God and pray for their wives are the best husbands in the world. Seems a little too long, right? <laughs> I cannot remember it. <laughs> Okay, let's try. Brothers, are you ready to try? Okay. Um, 
Okay, let one, two, three. <laughs> Those who have faith in God and pray for their wives are the world's best husbands. Wow, they did a good job. <laughs> so have faith in God. And then God will bless you with a wonderful marriage. And then you will pray for your wives. Amen. I pray that all our brothers may have absolute faith in God and pray for their wives. God's covenant family has such a great challenge. But it has such strength to deal with it because God was at the center of their marriage. Then finally, after 20 years Isaac's prayer for Rebekah, God answered, and Rebekah became pregnant. Every family comes with a lot of challenges in life. But when husband and wife have faith in God and pray, such a family is strong and thereby can withstand all those challenges. When you think about these two families, Ishmael's family and Isaac's family, Actually, we are shocked. It seemed that Ishmael was blessed and Isaac was cursed. But certainly it was not the case. So here we learn an important lesson. We learn that we should not judge anyone based on the present situation. Some people may look prosperous now, while others are not. Who are blessed and who are not blessed, we never know really. We never know. We never know how things will turn out in the end. So don't judge anyone based on the present situation. Instead, with humility and sincerity, each of us should struggle hard to live for God alone, doing what God wants us to do even with a fearful and trembling heart. Then, when his time comes, God will pour out his blessings on us, and all people can see how blessed we are. 